Hello guys and welcome to another video. So today we're doing a Q&A to celebrate this channel getting to 10,000 subscribers. I am currently at a loss for words. When I started this channel two years ago, I never dreamed of it getting to 10,000 subscribers. I didn't even dream of it getting to a thousand subscribers or even to a hundred subscribers. It took me like three months or four months to get to a hundred subscribers. Thank you guys for getting this channel to this huge milestone and I'll continue hopefully to make more videos in the future and hopefully we'll get many 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 more new subscribers. I think I'm also hitting my 200th video milestone very soon so what a month. Also I asked you guys over on my community tab if you wanted this video to be a live video or an edited video and this is what you gave me. What am I supposed to do with that? I'm making an edited version of the video and then someday we will figure out a time that works for most of us and then I'll do a live video, okay? Without further ado, let's get into your questions. Okay, first question. Would you rather go to Hogwarts or Camp Half-Blood and never know any of the main characters or be able to send a couple of letters to them that you know they would respond to? For me, as a 23 year old, this is easy. I would rather actually be at Hogwarts or at Camp Half-Blood. Honestly, Camp Half-Blood right now is much more appealing because I don't want to have to do homework or exams. Camp Half-Blood, you know, being active, playing volleyball, doing arts and craft, and it's just a camp. It sounds very nice and very fun. And writing a letter to the characters would be nice. They can live their life and I can live mine and I would rather not be in the real world. If it's a question between the real world or Camp Half Blood, then I think there's only one answer. What is your favorite Greek myth? I remember when I started reading the Rick Riordan books, I used to tell my little brother and my younger cousins, you know, the stories and the myths that I had learned. And I really liked telling the one about how the Olympians became the Olympians the six sons and daughters of Kronos, how <laughs> Kronos ate Zeus, and then how Zeus, Hades, and Poseidon uh, rolled the dice in order to pick each of their domains. So that was my favorite story to tell. I don't know right now what my favorite myth is. What's the saddest part of any Riordan book that gets you the hardest? For me, there's a lot, but family look you promised, hits so hard and there's so much buildup. I would agree anything between Annabeth and Luke just hits so hard because they have so much history together and we've seen so much of it. Also anything about Luke's mom hits super hard. Basically anything sad that happens in the first five books. If there was a crossover between Percy Jackson and Harry Potter, do you believe that they would be friends or do you think they would resort to war or violence. Given Camp Half-Blood's track record, I think their first solution might be violence to find that there's people who wield magic in the world and they're not children of Hecate. But I think they would try to work something out because they've already worked something out with Camp Jupiter. I think they would be more open to negotiations. And as far as the characters go, I think they would be friends. I think Percy and Harry would have a lot to talk about, you know, being the chosen ones and the ones who have had to fight a war ever since they were 12. And I think Annabeth and Hermione would also get along pretty well. And Grover and Ron as well. And just the side characters, I think they would be pretty cordial and there's a lot of fan art about this. I really enjoy this crossover. Are you excited for Taylor Swift's upcoming album? I don't know if this video goes up before or after her album, but I am so excited. It comes out on the 21st of October, which is Saint Thelia, and it just it's basically a present from Taylor to me and 13 tracks. I am very excited for Snow on the Beach and Lavender Haze, just all the names. Which two people from different book universe do you think people would ship if they'd been in the same book? I'm not gonna do a book universe one, but I'm gonna expose myself as a Tumblr and Pinterest user in the 2010s. And I'm gonna say that I really shipped Rapunzel and Jack Frost. I do ship Rapunzel and Eugene, okay, don't get me wrong. But in a universe where it's just Rapunzel, Jack Frost, Hiccup and Merida, then Rapunzel and Jack Frost just makes sense to me. And no, I never ship Hiccup and Merida because I ship 
Hiccup and Astrid a hell of a whole lot. So out of all the books you've reviewed, which do you find to have the most relatable characters overall? That probably has to be a contemporary book. Fantasy books and urban fantasy books, they're relatable but not in the circumstance kind of way. So you can relate to them to a certain degree because you'll never be in the shoes of someone learning they've had magic all along or that they're the chosen one or that they have to go on this epic quest to save the world, unfortunately. So I'm gonna say probably Heartstopper or basically anything by Alice Oseman. I feel like she captures the teenager experience, especially specific to the UK, very well. And specifically to that Tumblr era. I know you mentioned being able to relate to Magnus really well, but are there any books that you find wholeheartedly contain characters you could easily find in real life? Again, I think anything by Alice Oseman is probably something that you can find in real life. And I also have to say Taylor Jenkins Reid is also on that spectrum, but it would have to be more like a glamorous side. Alice Oseman, down to earth characters that you could meet like any day of the week. Taylor Jenkins Reid is when you go to a red carpet and you meet those or, you know, in the streets of New York. Which character, any fandom, do you relate to the most? And what is your favorite Taylor Swift album? Which character do I relate to the most? Honestly, it really depends on what I'm currently reading or watching. I relate to Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender a lot, also to Styles from Teen Wolf, also to Kath from Fangirl, and also a bit to Yamaguchi from Haikyuu. So a lot of characters, but I would have to think more about it. As far as favorite Taylor Swift album, I have to say Lover is the one that got me into Taylor Swift. It's the one that made me a true Swiftie but lately folklore just, just hits the spot. What other cultures myths do you want or think Rick to cover? I don't think Rick is going to cover any more cultures or myths himself. I do think Reed Riordan is going to cover however many as they want. If you could be best friends with anyone from Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, who would you choose? I think Magnus and I would be very good friends, but if I had to choose, probably Samira or Alex. Have you seen the Shadow and Bone Netflix season 2 sneak peek yet? I did. You're probably wondering why I didn't react to it. Well, my computer was broken and I wasn't at home, so there was literally no way for me to film and edit a video. I think that the story is gonna start to get derailed. Like, for the crows, I'd rather the crows weren't there, even though the crows are the most enjoyable part of the show, but when they're all lined up and it's the five of them with Wylan, okay, okay, I, I do enjoy it, even though I think it's not good for their character development to start so far in the past. What's your favorite book series, singular book of Rick Riordan's? Okay, so my favorite book series is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and my favorite book from there, I have decided it's Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian. Congrats! Could you rank all the Casey McKinston and Taylor Jenkins read books you've read? Pick your favorites from each author. I could, and I'm thinking of maybe making this like a whole video by itself, ranking my favorite author's books. Since I've read all of Casey McKinson's books and all of Taylor Jenkins read recent books, I think I could do it. So let me know down below if that would be something that you would be interested in. So for now, I'm gonna leave you hanging. Have you read The Cruel Prince? I have. I don't know if any of the videos where I talk about it have been posted yet. I don't think so, but look forward to it. Over the summer, I read the three of them, plus the short novel about this garden, and I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite, but it was very enjoyable. Very characters, June and Corden, and I just, I just wish we'd seen more of their relationship in the books. Also, if Six of Crows and the Percy Jackson and the Olympians characters met, who would be friends and who would hate each other? I think that the Percy Jackson and the Olympians characters would not like Cass. And for very good reason. He is a criminal and you could kind of say he is a bully in the way that he handles things sometimes, you know, intimidating people and scaring them in order to get what he wants. I don't think they would like each other. I think they would all adore Inej and Wylan and even Jesper and Nina, yes. I don't think they would really like Matthias either. I have a feeling Talia and Nina would get along really well. And also Grover and Wylan. 
they could bond over playing the flute. Congrats, you deserve it so much. Thank you. My question, what is your favorite book from the Lunar Chronicles? Interesting. Okay, I'm looking at them right now. Cinder is a good first book, but I like the fact that there's more characters later on. So Scarlet, basically nothing happens in it and it's not my favorite ship. So I'm gonna have to say either Cress or Winter. I'm gonna go with Cress because I like what happens there more. But then again, in Winter, we do get a lot of reunions between characters that haven't seen each other in so long. So it's, it's either of those two. I was wondering if you have any recommendations for someone who is in a reading slump. That sucks. I'm so sorry that you are in a reading slump right now. My recommendations for this are always the same. So here are the three steps. Number one, you either pick a book and you push through it and then it's magically a book that gets you out of a reading slump but this doesn't usually happen. Number two, pick a book that you're going to read alongside with someone else. This forces you to read the book so you can chat with them about it. And then number three, and I think this is the best one and the one that works most often for me, reread a book. Just reread all the books that you know you're going to love. This summer has been the summer of rereading books for me. I've reread so many of my favorite series and it has been so enjoyable. Marathoning a series is the best thing that could happen to me as a reader, specifically one that I've already read. I, I never read faster than when I'm rereading a series. So those are the three steps. Step number three is the easiest one, so that's what I recommend. One question I have is, can you speak fluent Spanish? Sí. Siempre me sorprende que nadie en este canal sepa que soy española y que hablo español. Pero bueno, eh, para los que hablan español, eh, buenos días. So yes, I'm Spanish and I do speak Spanish. And no, I'm not Irish or <laughs> Scottish or American. I'm sorry to disappoint. English is my second language. I have been learning it for years and going to Spain frequently, but I still can't speak fluently. If you want to speak Spanish fluently, then I recommend either getting a significant other who speaks Spanish fluently or just living in Spain, I think from six months to a year or Spain or anywhere else that they speak Spanish. What is your favorite movie? Now, I always have such a hard time answering this very question, but ever since 2021, I've been able to give an answer. It's not my favorite movie of all time but it's the movie that I've watched recently that has impacted me the most. And that is Spider-Man No Way Home. I've watched it uh, three times now in theaters. Once the day it came out, December 17th, 2021. The second time I watched it was a month after that, January 2022. And I wanted to go a third time because I was watching all of the Marvel Netflix TV shows but I didn't make it in time and they took it off theaters. But now there's Spider-Man No Way Home, the more fun version. And of course I forced my brother to go watch that <sighs> September 23rd when it premiered and it's still so good. And it is more fun. It is a much more fun version. You should go watch it. When was the first time you read Percy Jackson and the Olympians? I have gotten this question so many times that I think I'm just gonna make a whole video about it. So let me know if you're interested in knowing about this because literally at least 20 questions what is your favorite book from trials of apollo i think that has to be either the first one or the fifth one maybe because that's the ones that have solangelo maybe because that's the ones that i remember the most do you have any unpopular opinions in the riot i have many go check them out i have a whole playlist if you had to choose between spending years in tartarus and surviving or dying in a war of the gods it depends on my will to live but let's just say I'll spend years in Tartarus and survive. Maybe I'll build a nice hut. Maybe I'll meet a nice monster that wants to live with me and protect me. Who knows? Maybe I'll make friends. How did you get into the Riordan books? I told you, I told you, so many questions. Speed round. Who is your favorite character for each series? Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Percy, Heroes of Olympus, Annabeth, Trials of Apollo, Nico D'Angelo, <laughs> and Magnus Chase, Magnus. I feel like I cheated there somehow. Here's my question for you, important. Dark Lena or Melina? I have two different answers. If we're talking about the books, definitely neither. I hate both of the ships. I think Alina should be single as a Pringle. However, in the show, Melina all the way. I mean, I wouldn't mind if Alina just didn't end up with anyone, okay? She is an independent woman, 
but Mal is so cute and he is clearly very invested in her from the beginning and we get to see that so Melina for the win. Do you like Katniss? Yes, I adore Katniss. She's a very good character and a very good protagonist. Very active, especially in the first two books. And I just reread the trilogy. And let me tell you, I hadn't reread that since I was 14. And now, knowing myself and knowing I'm Arrow Ace, Katniss was giving off very strong Arrow Ace vibes. Like, maybe demi romantic and 100% asexual but from what she was saying like I could write a whole paper on this if you're Arrow Ace and you've read the Hunger Games trilogy you probably feel the same way because that girl was giving off such vibes like not allosexual at all and definitely at least demi romantic Peta or Gale, Peta all the way. When I was rereading the series, I had forgotten how much I loved Peta. I thought maybe he was overrated, but no, he is the sweetest, the cutest, the bestest of guys, and Gale can go die in a ditch. Do you own any Hunger Games merch? Unfortunately, I do not. I just own the books with the British covers. I think my sister does own the pin. Can you make a reading vlog or talk about the Hunger Games? Unfortunately, I just reread them and it didn't occur to me to film a reading vlog. So maybe I'll talk about the Hunger Games someday, but reading vlog, I would have to spend more time away from the books to reread them again because I literally just read them a month and a half ago. If you had to pick one book to recommend to someone, which would it be and why? So one book to anyone in the world I think is absolutely impossible. I don't think one book can satisfy everyone. I think one book can satisfy a lot of people, but not everyone in the whole world. So it would tell me, tell me more about the person. What are their likes, dislikes? What age are they? What have they been through in life? I don't know. I don't, I can't recommend a book to someone, someone being anyone in the world. That's a lot of pressure to put on me. What are your pronouns? She, her, favorite mythology, probably Greek, very biased, favorite female character from the Percy Jackson universe, that has to be Annabeth, and then I think Talia and Rina. What is your go-to book when you're feeling down? Now you probably think it might be Percy Jackson, Sex of Crows, something like that, but it's actually Simon Snow. So the other day I was feeling pretty down. I was like, I just need to reread Wayward Son and just read all of the chapters where it's Simon and Bass. So I just spent the whole afternoon reading basically half the book and um, I was so happy by the end. <laughs> Will you make a reading vlog for the Solangelo book? I'm very sad that you didn't see the Solangelo look, but I will still feature you in my video. So yes, I am definitely making a reading vlog and might also make a book review about it. It's gonna be a whole thing. What is your favorite book or book series that is not in the right order of bears? You, you know this, it's Six of Crows, Carry On, Heartstopper, any Taylor Jenkins read books that she has published over the last five years. I have a video doing a top 10 favorite book series of all time and I watched it the other day and I definitely have to update it. So maybe I'll do that at the beginning of 2023 because I've read so much this year. You, you're not even ready for this book wrap up of 2022. What are two characters from two polar opposite book series that you think would be best friends? Okay, so they're not total polar opposites, but I think that Thorn from the Lunar Chronicles and Jasper from Six of Crows would get along swimmingly. They would flirt up a storm and they would be dangerous together, like chaotic duo material. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is blue, sky blue to be more specific. It makes me so happy. Who's your favorite Six of Crows character that has to be Inesh and Cass tied together forever and Kanesh is just my favorite entity? Do you do cosplay or anything like that? <laughs> I do do cosplay and things like that. So in the past I have obviously cosplayed as basically every single Percy Jackson Heroes of Olympus character, main character, and also side characters that 
there exist. I have so many videos about that, you should go watch them. I have also cosplayed Reggie from Julie and the Phantoms for Halloween, and I've also cosplayed as Taylor Swift in a recent convention that I went to. As a goodbye to the Voltrum Phantom, I cosplayed a gender bent version of Lance to a convention. I don't have a picture of that, but I was very spot on and they recognized me. Also, in the Taylor Swift cosplay, they asked me for pictures about like five times. So five strangers had a picture of me dressed as Taylor Swift in the You Belong With Me music video, just posing like this. And I, I do want to make a cosplay video, but we'll see. I have three questions for you. Okay, let's see. Have you ever read Divergent? And if so, what is your own on four and tris? I don't know what that question means, but I have read Divergent, uh, the first one only, and I was disappointed by the ending, never picked up the other two. I'm guessing, uh, do I like four and tris together? I thought they were boring. And who is your favorite supporting character in Harry Potter? I don't remember, because I read Harry Potter about seven years ago, maybe more than that. And I haven't watched the movies in a long time, but I will say that although this is not thanks to J.K. Rowling at all, it's thanks to my cousin forcing fanfic on me, I do love the Marauders, and James Potter and Lily Evans is my OTP out of Harry Potter. Who's your favorite Osmanverse character? This has an easy answer, and that is Nick Nelson. He is my favorite. I love him so much. I do have to say that I was very worried about how he was going to be portrayed in the TV show with this whole Imogen thing. I still don't know if it's Imogen or Imogen, even though they pronounced it there. However, I have some thoughts on that. The thing I don't love about Nick in the TV show is when Charlie gets hurt while playing rugby. In the graphic novel, Nick picked Charlie up, he carried him bridal style into the infirmary or into the changing rooms. In the TV show, even though it might be more realistic maybe, because he's scared of coming out and people seeing that, in the TV show he just stood there and then discreetly went into the infirmary where Charlie was and just like rubbed some dirt off him, which, okay, objectively, extremely cute, love that scene. But I did not like the fact that Nick stood back while Charlie was hurt, because Graphic novel Nick would never do that. And in fact, he didn't do that. Do you ever worry you will run out of content to make videos on? Now this kind of feels like a personal attack. This person being like, it, it's clear that you're running out of content from the last videos that you've put out. But I know it's probably not like that. I do worry, but I know that's not going to happen. My channel has flourished ever since Rick announced that he was making a Percy Jackson adaptation and ever since the cast was announced. Every time a Percy Jackson related news comes out, my channel just skyrockets. So I know that at least until 2024 and beyond that, my channel is set at least for Percy Jackson content. And in terms of book content, I am a reader, I read every day and I read so much that there's literally no way for me to run out of videos ideas. If I run out of videos ideas, I could literally just do reading blogs or book reviews because I read at least a book a week, so I could still do weekly videos. So do not worry. If I ever run out of content, at least I know I can jump on my community tab and ask you guys for ideas. I would love to know what do you think will happen in the new Nico and Will book and do you think the next book will be of the Hunters of Artemis Adventures? Very good question. I do have a whole video for what I believe is going to happen in the Solange look, so definitely go check that out. And in terms of the Hunters of Artemis, in one of my very old videos, I do not suggest you go watch it, I talk about what books I think Rick might create now as standalones for different characters, and the Hunters of Artemis and Talia and Reyna were definitely on that list. What is your favorite Fiero Chase moment? For me, it has to be hands down their last moment when they are in Magnus's rooms. Magnus is for some reason I don't remember covered in chocolate and just Alex comes up to him and they kiss and Magnus is like Alex is a boy right now I'm kissing a boy but I don't care because I'm kissing Alex. 
anything with them in the second and third books. I, Jesus, I need to reread that trilogy because I love them so much and I love Magnus so much and I keep saying that, but I have to prove my love, so I'm gonna reread it. Soon, okay, soon, ish, maybe, someday. Question, do you forgive Luke? Answer, I do not. I think that what Cronus did was unforgivable and Luke went through unimaginable pain, but I still think that it, what he did was unforgivable. Probably if Luke was canonically ugly, like Octavian is, a lot more of the fandom would hate him. Unpopular opinion, you wanted one and I gave you one. How excited were you when you learned that they started filming Hornstopper season two on a scale of one to 10, Probably a hundred. Well, I recently went to a convention and I had my eye on this and this is the first thing that I bought. They're wearing the same clothes. And recently we got a leak or just someone who saw them in the street filming season two and they're wearing this exact outfit. No, I haven't. So yeah, very excited, obviously. If you had to pick a reason of why Solangelo is better than Persebeth, why would that be? Because they're gay. What is your ultimate OTP and why? It's Persebeth, you know this, I know this, I made a whole video about this. It is what it is. What is your zodiac sign? So I am a Sagittarius sun, I am a Capricorn moon, and a Gemini rising. You tell me what that means because I don't know. I just know what my signs are because my friends are obsessed with that and they made me do the chart thing. What type of student were you in school? That depends in which school you're talking about because I did go to three schools in three years, so not because I thought it was a bad student, but because my dad's job made us move around a lot. So I guess I was not a lazy student. I was the kind of student that I'm too tired to do this tonight, so I'll just go to sleep now so I can wake up early and then do my homework five minutes before I leave to school that day. Or just copy my friend's homework. You should be a better student than I was, but I made it through. <laughs> what can I say? Why did you start YouTube? I started YouTube May 2020 during the quarantine because I was born and because Rick Riordan just announced that he was talking to Disney Plus and we might get a Percy Jackson live action adaptation. <coughs> God, my eyes are watering. I'm just so emotional. Just thinking back to that day when I made the worst video I've ever made. I might react to that video one day. Hunger Games Simulator, yes, one is coming and with a twist. And when I say it's coming, I mean that it is on the list of videos I want to make. I have not edited it yet because I have not filmed it yet. It is coming 2023. That I can promise. What do you think about Rick's cover artist for getting Nico's skull ring in the sun and the stars? Maybe the ring is just on his left hand where he's pointing and we can't really see it. I think that they probably did forget it, but the fact that one of his hands, you can't see it, is a good excuse and you can just say it's there. Do you have a family? Well, Master Moo Cow, I, I do have a family, thankfully. And here we are. We are a very beautiful family, very handsome family. If you had to choose one of the Riot Universe characters to die, who would you choose? Honestly, I get this question every single time I make a Q&A video. And I think I should just start making a wheel with random Percy Jackson characters and spin it every time someone asks me this question, just so I have like a random character to kill. So let's see. Hmm, someone random. I'm gonna say Chiron. Chiron should have died. It would have made things interesting. Why not? And on that note, we are done with all of the questions. What a way to end this video. I am sorry, Chiron. I feel like I'm doing an award acceptance speech. I want to thank every one of you for supporting me and for tagging along with me in this beautiful journey. First of all, my family, thank you for always being there for me. And my friends who did not laugh at me when I told them that I made a YouTube channel. No, that was strictly my family who laughed at me. Okay, so please hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below 
just anything, just anything that's on your mind. How are you doing this beautiful October month? Click that bell button so you get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos just like this every single Friday, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!